Captain Marvel has officially begun principal photography, as announced in a press release that I just got in my inbox from Walt Disney Studios. And you know, this is a very interesting project because we're not quite sure how it's going to come together, especially in a post-Black Panther world, because that sure worked out, right? Is Marvel going to get more political? What are going to be the selling points for their movies, right? Because Black Panther you know, very aggressively celebrated African culture and history. So Wonder Woman already did the whole female hero thing, right? So what's going to make Captain Marvel stand out? I would say that with Carol Danvers' uh, backstory, it would be a combination of the military and female camaraderie. She's got a lot of girlfriends, like female friends, in the comics, which I think has always been quite nice. Although I've also recently pointed out that those comics keep getting canceled. Uh, so I don't know how much everybody else enjoys it. But anyway, with this, with, with this press release that came out, it's got tiny little print, but I, I read all the way through it and there were some very interesting nuggets of information. Uh, the first being that the selling point they seem to be going for uh, is blasts from the past. Now we already knew that we were going to get Nick Fury with two eyes. And I have to say, as silly as that might sound, I'm actually kind of excited about that. I think that's a legit selling point. Uh, but we're, they're going not to uh, not stop there. They're going to bring back other characters as well. Now, of course, duh, they're going to bring back some Kree characters that they've already introduced. And since this story takes place in the 1990s, they can bring back ones that are dead. And so they're going to bring back two from Guardians of the Galaxy, the first movie. One is Korath the Pursuer, which they did a crappy job of explaining that he was Kree in the movie because I only realized that when I was doing my notes for this video. And he, of course, was played by uh, Jamon, uh, Jamon Hansu, who, like Idris Elba, I'm sure, they're probably both kicking themselves. They didn't hold out for bigger roles in the MCU. I mean, how could they have known that Black Panther was eventually coming? But still, I think this is a good lesson. Don't take, uh, you know, the crumbs that are handed to you up front because something, something better has to come along, right? I mean, this role is ridiculous. I only remember him for being like, who? When uh, Star, uh, you know, Chris Pratt tried to say he was Star-Lord. That's, I think, what he's best known for in the movie. And then also, speaking of embarrassing uh, situations in Guardians of the Galaxy, Lee Pace's Ronan the Accuser is coming back, who was infamously killed in a dance-off. Apparently, he had the wrong training. <laughs> I mean, here's hoping they both can redeem themselves in Captain Marvel, although the 90s did have some interesting dance moves that could be potentially mined. Anyway, uh, of course, Captain Marvel does focus on the kree scroll War, so it does make sense that you would bring back uh, the few Kree characters, again, that have already been established. But speaking of coming back from the dead, uh, the real kicker is that Clark Gregg is going to apparently be in this movie. That's right, Agent Coulson returns to the big screen. Now, he's already returned to the small screen, uh, and many of you swear by Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think that's, you know, it's really great that the show has such a loyal fan base. And all the time, people say, oh, it's gotten better, it's gotten better, but I just can't make myself watch it. And it's interesting about Clark Gregg, because he has his own infamous backstory, where Joss Whedon said, hey, I'm giving you your own TV show. Uh, but then the, the double-edged uh, sword there was that he found himself kicked out of the movies for good. Uh, and so I think it's interesting that Feige's allowing him to cross back into the MCU because, uh, you know, of course, Feige doesn't control television at Marvel. But he's coming back, and I think, again, you know, is, is it a bit gimmicky to have uh, these characters return? No, I think it's a lot gimmicky, and I think that... Uh, um, I'm a little bit worried that this is what maybe they think that they're going to have to rely on. But when you have five credited writers on your movie, that's the other big takeaway. Well, there's one other big takeaway as well. Uh, for this press release, I guess that you take whatever assists you can get. That's right. They have five credited writers on the film. That is a huge number to get credited, no less, uh, for uh, any picture. Uh, and that's not even including the rewrites done by the directing duo, which, uh, which they also admit to. So that's uh, technically seven writers on this script. Oh boy. So who are they? Well, they're all women, and that's the selling point there that they went with. They were like, there's a lot of them, but it's a lot of ladies. So it's Meg Lafave who wrote Inside Out and The Good Dinosaur, Nicole Perlman, who did the first Guardians of the Galaxy. She comes from the Disney writing program. Uh, and she also, by the way, uh, worked on the, uh, the new Damien Chazelle movie, First Man, but we don't know how that turned out. Uh, then Geneva Robertson Dorette, who wrote Tomb Raider, the newest Tomb Raider, and she actually talked about Captain Marvel recently, saying it, you know, Tomb Raider was originally going to be a comedy, uh, and they've decided uh, she's so happy that she could 
she can still deliver a female action comedy with Captain Marvel. And we're all like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I thought the Tomb Raider, by the way, had just the right amount of comedy. So I'm nervous about someone saying, oh, this is going to have a lot more. And then uh, Liz uh, Flahive and Carly Mensch from Glow are, have also, were also brought on to do some rewrites. And I have to say that's the best news in terms of who's working on this behind the scenes because I loved Glow. I thought it was very good. It's the Netflix miniseries with Alison Brie. Very real depiction of women. Very grounded. A lot of fun. Real, both fun and dramatic. So I think, you know, I feel good about them, their involvement. But at the same time, when you consider that they did a TV series and that Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, our directors, uh, just have done Mississippi Grind and Half, Half Nelson, this whole thing, and also even considering who they're bringing in here, right? You know, uh, Clark Gregg, uh, Jamon Hansu, Lee Pace, uh, the whole thing's starting to seem a little low key. And that's the best spin I can put on it. I feel it's a little television like. But you know, I think we've learned not to underestimate Marvel at this point. But I, we can still be nervous, I think. I mean, the biggest stars that this movie has in terms of, like, movie talent is Ben Mendelsohn, who I have to say, I don't think audiences really like him very much. I think that, uh, that he certainly has his fans. I'm one of them. I thought he was great in Rogue One. But he just doesn't do, his movies just don't do that well. He's even in the upcoming Ready Player One, and no one's really paying attention to his work there or that movie. So I don't know how much of a selling point Ben Mendelsohn is. And then, of course, Jude Law is there as the original uh, Mar Marvel, and everyone's excited about that. But I was surprised to see in the press release that he has an and credit at the very end, which would maybe say that his role is not that big. Uh, I mean, maybe it would be like a Kurt Russell size in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which was actually, you know, decent. But, you know, don't think that Jude Law is the male lead here. But I want to end on a positive note, because even though I don't see it reflected in the press release, the words of the press release, I think that the photo that they picked to go along with it of Brie Nelson at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada researching the character and posing with a real-life Air Force pilot is the direction that we hope this movie will go in. So at least they've got it visually. I mean, you've got that sun in the background, right? It's got both a military feel and female camaraderie. It's really, really nice. And on that note, I just would also like to point out that another takeaway, when you think about it from this press release, is that there are not a lot of other women, you know, female characters in this movie. They're all behind the camera. You know, they've focused so hard on having all these female writers and a, a female co-director. How many women are actually on screen with Carol Danvers? Again, I said that her female friendships in the comics is one of the most, one of the nicest and most unique things about the character. Uh, look how nice it is to see her standing next to the other pilot. Are you going to have that in the movie at all? Uh, Lashana Lynch recently took over from Dewanda Wise as a mystery character who many of us believe will be Monica Rambeau. She is Spectrum in the comics, uh, but she did don the Ms. Marvel mantle for a while. Uh, and I hope that she's heavily featured. I think that would be really great. You know, even in Wonder Woman, you know, she fought alongside a bunch of guys. And so that could be something that does make uh, this, this story, Captain Marvel, unique. You know, it's another female, uh, you know, superhero, but, you know, she is a part of a group. Again, female camaraderie, and also I would heavily play up that military angle because look how well American Sniper did at the box office, right? Uh, talk about a selling point. But I'm curious, how do you think Captain Marvel is coming together? What direction would you like to see it go in? What do you think of uh, these returning favorites? Is that a selling point or do you agree that it's kind of gimmicky? I mean, I don't know. I'm into it, but... Um I don't think that should be like the main selling point. Uh, and then also, what do you think about having five credited writers? And how, do you think that military and female camaraderie is the way to go? Uh, write your thoughts down below. We'll certainly be paying attention to this movie as it continues to develop. And also, you know what principal photography means? Maybe some more set photos. Uh, we've just basically seen her in that green Cree suit uh, that looks a lot, you know, just a different color palette than her, uh, her final suit. Uh, there's been like a shot of Jude Law on set, which didn't really reveal anything. But maybe now that they're shooting in earnest, we might get some cool, um, some, some nice things to discuss. All right, so again, write your thoughts down below and you can check out some more videos right now. <laughs>